Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm finally doing DIY gifts. I held off, well, first of all, let's roll it back. I feel like a lot of the DIYs I make could be gifts, but I held off on making gifts because a lot of the things you see, I don't want personally. <laughs> like, I don't think, I don't think they, like there's really, there's no, I can't name anything without throwing shade, so I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> but there's really, there's like some main gifts, you know what I'm talking about, that are always made. And so I wanted to make things for people that I would actually want. So that's what we did today. <laughs> um, and the theme is, so a little backstory behind the scenes. My cousin, she is, I know she's probably watching this. <laughs> so my cousin turned 25. Obviously with everything going on, she couldn't celebrate her birthday the way she wanted to, but we still want her to feel special. So I, she's been Aries, she's very into astrology as well as astronomy and like the moon and all of that. So I wanted to give her gifts that were, that kind of have a celestial theme, you know? And so I made her a few things. I know a lot of people are using YouTube as a feel good and a happy place. So hopefully you can do that as well. That's what I've been doing. I try to keep it positive and light. And so I'm gonna keep doing that. So if you wanna see what I made her, please keep on watching. My first DIY is so simple it barely counts as a DIY. I made this rose gold Aries constellation necklace. The first thing I did was to find the center of the chain. This purple twist tie came with it and was already in the middle, so it made it much easier. <laughs> Once I found the center, I took a pair of pliers and cut it in half, and it cut pretty easily. Then I opened one jump ring and while holding it with the pliers, I slipped the pendant on as well as the chain. To get the jump ring to close, you could use your fingers, but that'll probably hurt. So it's much easier if you just have a second pair of pliers and use it to push it close. You'll do the same thing to the other side of the pendant, attaching a jump ring and the chain and closing it, and that's it. This next DIY is a clay trinket dish. Now I'm well aware I'm not the first one to make one of these. They're all over YouTube, but I knew she would love it. And she has something to hold her new necklace. To start off, I took a ball of clay about the size of my palm. I used a rolling pin to roll the ball out to a quarter of an inch thick. I used this large mug as a circular template for the size, but you can just grab whatever cup bowl you have on hand. Really doesn't matter. I placed it on top and trimmed the excess off. Here you see me smoothing out the indent that the mug made by me pressing down on it. I took the clay disc and molded it over the bottom of the mug and baked it just like that so it would maintain its shape. You'll bake it per your clay's instructions. I did like the imperfect edge that look is very her as well. I did smooth out some of the rougher parts with sandpaper. After that, I Googled an Aries ram and drew one with pencil onto the clay. I took regular black acrylic paint and painted over my pencil, and then I applied this iridescent glaze that for some reason doesn't really show up on camera, but it made the dish really sparkly when the light hit it, and she loves glitter and sparkle, so I knew it would be a good touch. I applied two coats of this and let it dry, and then I had some Sculpey Shiny top coat and applied that as well. I did end up going over the black paint again, just so it would pop more because I put the iridescent glaze on it. The last gift I made was a tote with the moon phases painted on it. I took a sheet of sticky back foam paper. I don't know if that's the official name, but like I said, I'll link it down below. <laughs> and I traced this moon picture I found on Google. To make this a transferable image, I drew on the back of the paper with pencil, and then I traced over the front with a pen. I learned this technique in elementary school, but for this to work effectively, you need to make sure you have a very thick layer of pencil on the back. It has to be pretty opaque. I retraced the transfer outline with pen so it was easier to see and then cut out each shape individually. In the end, you'll have little moon stickers. To guarantee the stickers were in a straight line, I used painter's tape and it also served as a border so I could control where the paint went a little bit more. I arranged the stickers in the correct order and then I took a paintbrush, you could also use a foam brush like me, and black fabric paint and go over each sticker and make sure you get in all of the nooks and crannies. Mm -hmm. 
Before everything was dry, I pulled off the stickers and the tape so the edge would be a little cleaner. And then what I didn't show is I decided later on that I wanted the edges to be a little cleaner, so I went in with a tiny paintbrush and black paint and cleaned it up. So like I said in the beginning, I've already given these to her. Spoiler alert, she loved all of it. <laughs> She was so happy <laughs> and whatnot. They were given to her in an appropriate social distancing way, <laughs> just FYI. <laughs> but she was just very happy and it made her smile, which made me smile, which is all I ever want, is to make other people happy when I give them a present. Um, so she loved it and hopefully, maybe if you have someone in your life, you could do these things. All of the stuff can be ordered online so you don't have to order, leave your house. And like I said, I'll list all materials down below in the description box. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.